Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll explain you about STAR schema, which is one of the data modeling techniques that we'll be using in Power BI desktop. Subscribe to my channel to get alerts on my new technical videos. You would have visited your school website. It will have all the activities, accolades, and the testimonials of the school. The website will display the sports activities conducted in the school like basketball, carom, chess, cricket, football, table tennis or tennis. It will also display the various club activities which are organized in school like the art club, astronomy club, robotics club and so on. Similarly, the school can also conduct some voluntary programs which are these scouts and the guides. It can also conduct some personality development programs like public speaking, storytelling, etiquettes, which is almost needed for each and every student. So these are the different dimensions that the school is looking at for the students. So each student can opt for whichever activity he or she wants. So the school administration will maintain a register like this where they'll make note of the student details along with the extracurricular activities that they have opted for. David has opted for the cricket class and Annie has opted for the chess class. In a nutshell, sports, clubs, voluntary programs and the personality development programs are the four different dimensions that the school is looking at and based on the registrations, a fact record is created with the student activity mapping. So in this example, this register is going to be the fact table and the dimensions are the sports table, the clubs table, voluntary programs and the personality development programs. In this example, we have got only one fact table that is getting mapped with four dimension tables. So we call this schema to be a star schema because it is said to represent the shape of a star. Now let me explain you this star schema in Power BI Desktop with the sample data that I have created and that sample data is nothing but a denormalized data and we are going to see how we are going to convert that denormalized data to a normalized set of tables. This is the denormalized data that I have created. It contains the details of the students and the various activities to which they are enrolled with. Now I'm going to import that Excel data into my Power BI desktop. So I'll click on Excel workbook. I'm going to select this data sheet and then I'm going to click on load, which is going to load that data into my Power BI desktop. Here in the data section, we can see this table getting loaded. Now I would want to transform this data into a normalized set of tables. So I'll click on transform data, which is going to show me the data that I had in my Excel workbook. So here you can see the registration number of the student, the name of the student and the sport name. The extracurricular activities are optional to the students. So we should not be expecting all the students to register for these extracurricular activities. So that is why we are seeing some of the values to be null. So null is actually a blank value if the student has not registered for any sport. In that case, the sport name is obviously going to be blank. And when we load that data into Power BI desktop, the blank will be indicated as null, meaning there is no value in that particular cell. Along with the sport name, I also have the sport coach name, the sport days and the sport timings. Meaning each and every sport will have a separate coach and the coach can conduct the sport activities on any weekday or weekend or it can be a combination of days. So that is what we are going to track here in this column, which is the sport days. And the sport timings is when the students will actually participate in that sport activity. Similarly, we have the club name, the club trainer name and the days on which the club activity is expected to be conducted and the timings because these are going to be the after school activities or the weekend classes for the students. VP is nothing but the voluntary program name which is nothing but the scouts and the guides and 
the VP trainer will be added here. PD is the personality development program, which is the storytelling, etiquette, and the public speaking. When you look at this table, it will be a bit confusing at the first sight. If you ask me, what are the various port names that are being conducted? So I'll have to check this entire column and then get the unique set of values and then give you the data. And it is going to be a very cumbersome process. So we are going to split the single table into one fact table and multiple dimension tables. For that purpose, I'm going to create duplicates of this particular table. I'm going to rename this to fact underscore students because this is going to be my fact table. And the duplicate copy of it is going to be a dimension table. So I'll have dim underscore sports. Now I've got five copies of the same data. The next step is to have the relevant data in the corresponding table. So I want only the sports data to be in the sports table and the clubs data in the clubs table. So is the case with voluntary programs and personality development. So I'm going to work on cleaning the data in these tables. This is the sports table. Here I don't need the registration number and the name of the student because it is just a dimension table. So I'm going to select these columns and then remove them. I need the sport name, sport coach name, sport days and the sport timings and I'm going to remove the remaining columns. So the sports table is going to have only four columns. The next step is to remove the duplicate values. Reduce rows where you have an option to remove the duplicates. So you will see only eight rows here but one row is a blank row. Remove blank rows. Now let's clean up the other three dimension tables as well. So this is the cleaned up data that we have. Now let's clean up the fact table. So what we are going to do is we are going to combine the fact table and the dimension table. So to combine two tables, all that we need is a unique column which is going to link these two tables. So here for this particular student, the sport name is given to be Karam. And if we go and check the sport table, which is the dimension table for Karen, we already have the coach name, the day and the sport timings. So this is going to be a direct mapping based on the sport name. So you would be thinking that it would be good if we can have only the sport name here. Consider the scenario where the school has got a lot of registrations for the basketball or the football sport. So in that case, one trainer will not be able to train all the students. So there is a need for some additional trainers where each trainer will be assigned a few set of students. In that case, a direct mapping on sport name will be misleading because it is going to give you a different coach name for a different student. So there is a need to have an index column in each of the dimension tables and we are going to map 
that index column here in the fact table. In this sports table, we have only four columns, but we do not have any index column. In Power BI Desktop, we can insert a new index column by clicking on this Add Index Column. Anyone who has already worked on a database would tools to have an index column to start with zero. So I'm going to create the index values from zero, but otherwise Power BI Desktop is also giving you an option to create an index value with any specified number or from one. So you also have an option to give the starting index and also the increment value. But I don't want to get into this kind of custom index. So I'm going to create my index with the starting value as zero. So I'll give add index column from zero. So a new column called index would have got created here and I'm going to move this column as the first column in my table. Since I'm going to create index values in each of the dimension tables, I'm going to rename this index column to sports underscore index. So similarly, I'm going to create index columns in the other dimension tables. Now that we have created index columns in each of the dimension tables, we are next going to combine the fact table and the dimension tables. So I'm going to click on combine, merge queries. So this is the table with which I'm going to merge another table with a join. First, I'm going to select the sports dimension table. So I'm going to select the sport name, coach name, sport days and the sport timings in both these tables and it is going to be a left auto join and then I'll click on OK. Here I can see that the dim sports table got merged so I'll just expand it where I'll say I just want the sport index to be here. So I've got the sport index here. Since I've got the sport index column here I'm going to remove all the sport related columns from the students table. Similarly, I'm going to merge the index values of the other dimension tables into this fact table. As you can see here, I've got the index values of sports, club, PP and the PD tables. Now click on close and apply. Instead of the one data table that we have, it is going to refresh with five different tables. So you can see the fact table and dimension tables to be loaded here. Go to modeling and then click on manage relationships. Here you can see that this fact table is linked to these many tables. And the relationship that you see here is many to one. Meaning many records in the student table will be mapped to one record in the club's dimension table. So is the case with the other dimension tables. Now click on this model view to see how this model appears. This view appears like a star and this is what we call it to be a star schema. And each and every table that we have here are called normalized tables. Hope you have got a good understanding on what a star schema is in data modeling and how to convert a denormalized data into normalized tables. See you soon with my next set of videos.